came across an interesting case there recently again it's about uh, Tesco and a night manager being dismissed or fired from his job he was subject to a five-hour interrogation according to the workplace relations commission adjudicator he was dismissed and he brought a claim for unfair dismissal he was a night manager in port leash with tesco he admitted to serving himself at the till and had forgotten to pay for cigarettes the employer tesco took the view that he was guilty of theft uh, the employee admitted serving himself at the till in breach of company policy but said he'd simply forgotten to pay for the cigarettes and intended paying later on. As I say, Tesco took the view that this amounted to theft. The fact then that he was a manager was something that was uh, important to Tesco as well because basically the question of trust and confidence in the employer going for, employee going forward was going to be difficult, to put it mildly. The manager, Mr Scully, had a legal team and basically they argued that the findings of facts, fact against him had been arrived at by a prejudged and procedurally defective company investigation. What happened was Mr Scully arrived for a night shift at the supermarket's Port Leash store starting at 10 o'clock in the evening. He was told that he was being suspended with pay and was ordered to attend an investigation the investigation meeting the following afternoon. At the meeting he was brought through a series of till receipts and he was asked if he recalled the transaction. He was also shown for each receipt he went on to show a corresponding CCTV still after which Mr Scully the employee admitted serving himself or processing a refund for himself. Uh, he told uh, the general manager that he thought it was permissible to serve himself with a witness present, notwithstanding that the CCTV clearly showed no witness present on some occasions. Then the, uh, Mr Scully was asked about a packet of cigarettes that he had uh, taken without paying on a particular night in July of 2019, and he said he remembered taking the cigarettes uh, with the intent of paying for them the next day between 7 and 8 when his wages were in his account. Uh, so basically he said he forgot to pay for them. The uh, meeting went ahead then the next day and the legal team for the uh, employee who was fired basically argued that it was akin, because it was during the day and because he was a night shift manager, it was akin to asking him or making him attend a, middle, a meeting in the middle of the night. The uh, meeting went on for over five hours and then there was the question of Mr Scully having to leave or looking to leave at 5 p.m. because of uh, picking up uh, children from a crash I think. Between the jigs and the reels the uh, adjudicator at the hearing, WRC hearing, basically said uh, that the procedure was unfair that it was substantially and procedurally unfair. The adjudicator said that the company had adopted an interrogative approach and made his disbelief known in regard to the cigarettes before making any findings and that it was most serious that the complainant only had 14 hours notice of the meeting, calling this not adequate. Also, he wasn't given the specifics of the allegations prior to the meeting. She wrote that the process which led to Mr Scully's dismissal was both substantively and procedurally unfair and upheld his complaint. She said that she agreed that he contributed to a large degree to the circumstances giving rise to his dismissal and consequent losses and uh, Mr Scully had done all that was possible to mitigate his losses by finding new employment. She made an order for €23,363 against Tesco, a sum she wrote amounted to a quarter of the tribunal's maximum jurisdiction in the case of, um, of 104 weeks pay. In other words, under the Unfair Dismissals Act, it's 
possible for an adjudicator to award up to two years pay. In this case, she awarded 25% of that because she took the view that the employee contributed to a large extent to his own dismissal. Nevertheless, there's an argument here, or there is a lesson here rather, for employers, and it's a lesson that I have touched upon on this uh, channel before and I've written about as well in blog posts and so on. No matter what the behaviour of the employee, the he or she is entitled to fair procedures and natural justice and an employer has to be careful, has to be prudent to carry out a process which ultimately, if it's going to lead to a dismissal which has very significant consequences for any employee, must be fair, must be impartial, must not involve a prejudgment, must be basically uh, ensure fair procedures and natural justice. Without that procedure, without a fair procedure, without adequate and fair procedural steps, an employer will be in difficulty and at risk of losing an unfair dismissal claim. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, I would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.